untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black discard deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Angrath, the Flame Chained, as our commander. A 5-mana Planeswalker starts out at 4 loyalty and can plus 1 to make each opponent discard a card and lose 2 life. The minus 3 can gain control of target creature until end of turn, get to untap it and give it haste until end of turn, and we can sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step if it has mana value 3 or less. And finally, the minus 8 makes each opponent lose life equal to the number of cards in their graveyard, so it can deal a ton of damage to close out the game. And then to synergize with Angrath, we have a bunch of cards that reward us for making the opponent discard cards. At 2 mana there's Tiny Bones, a 1-2 creature that lets us draw a card at the cost of 1 life if we made an opponent discard a card this turn. And then for 6 mana, if the opponent is empty-handed, they will lose 10 life. Then we have a Waste Knot, an enchantment that when the opponent discards a creature card makes a 2-2 zombie token. When they discard a land card, we add double black to our mana pool. And when they discard a non-creature non-land card, we get to draw a card. Then there's a Davriel that can minus one to make them discard a card. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel deals two damage to them. Then we have a new addition from Alchemy, a 3-mana 1-3 Legendary Demon with Flying and Death Touch, and when the Pact Bound Servant enters a battlefield, each player discards a non-land card, us included, and whenever a player discards a card during our turn, they get to choose the opponent, that player conjures a duplicate of that card into their hand, and they can spend mana as a third mana of any color to cast that spell. So of course, since we're the discard deck, we're gonna take full advantage of that ability. Then we also have Fell Spectre, a 4-mana 1-3 flyer, when it enters makes the opponent discard a card, and whenever they discard a card they lose 2 life, which can quickly add up. And then there's also Turgrid, God of Fright, a 4-5 legendary god with menace, saying whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, we get to put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, so synergizes with sacrifice abilities as well as discard effects. And then we also have the flexibility of playing Turgrid's Lantern for 4 mana, and then the next category are additional discard effects, featuring Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek, and Thoughtseize at 1 mana. We've got Acquisitions Expert, Burglar Rat, Elder Fang Disciple. We've got Virus Beetle as creatures that make the opponent discard a card when they enter the battlefield, as well as Undercity Plunder from Alchemy makes the opponent discard a card, and then they have to discard a second card or we get to conjure a card from their deck into our hand. And then there's Croxa that can also be escaped out of our graveyard as a powerful 6-6 Elder Giant that makes the opponent a discard when it enters or when it attacks. We've got Colligan's Command, often blows up artifacts or makes the opponent discard, potentially gets a creature back from our graveyard. City Stalker Connoisseur is a 3-3 with Death Touch, making the opponent a discard their most expensive card when it enters the battlefield. Long Reach of Night is a Saga from Kamigawa, making each opponent sacrifice a creature unless they discard a card on the first two chapters, eventually transforming into Animus of Night's Reach. We've got a Liliana, which can make each player discard a card, and each opponent who cannot loses 3 life, can also potentially take out some creatures with the minus, and then a minus 7 can also be very powerful. And then a Rankle, Master of Pranks, has a great synergy with all those cheap creatures that we've just covered, making the opponent to discard cards when they enter, because we can potentially sacrifice those and force the opponent to sacrifice a creature. Also great synergy with Angrath's minus 3 ability, can potentially steal an opposing creature and then sacrifice it to Rankle's ability if it manages to connect with the opponent, and of course can make the opponent to discard a card as well. And then the next category is removal, mostly spot removal, with Blood Chief's Thirst can be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. Fatal Push and Lightning Bolt don't need an introduction. Then we've got Chainer's Edict alongside some other edict effects like Liliana's Triumph, which also synergizes with the three Liliana planeswalkers in the deck, as well as Soul Shatter, which are all sacrifice effects to synergize with Turgrid as well. We've got Feed the Swarm to potentially destroy enchantments, very important in a red-black deck, which otherwise can't really interact with those. We've got Heartless Act as more spot removal, a Braid can also deal with artifacts, Angra's Rampage also quite flexible, also an Edict effect potentially. We've got Never to Return, which can destroy a creature or planeswalker, and can also be flashed back essentially with Aftermath. We've got Bone Crusher dealing 2 damage and being a 4-3 creature afterwards. Bedevil can deal with artifacts, creatures or planeswalkers. Hagra Mauling can be a land or a removal spell. 
and then Glorybringer is a 5 mana creature that can take out an opposing non-dragon creature dealing 4 damage to it when it exerts. We've got March of Wretched Sorrow, another new addition from Kamigawa, can potentially pitch some black cards from our hand to cast it on the cheap, and then Cut to Ribbons also has Aftermath to potentially drain the opponent to death in the late game. And then the next category are Sweeper Effects, where we have Sweltering Suns, dealing 3 damage to each creature can also be cycled, Extinction Event can potentially exile some creatures, Crux of Fate, a powerful 5 mana sweeper, either destroying all dragons or all non-dragons, Blood on the Snow to go with our snow lands can destroy all creatures or all planeswalkers and potentially get something back from the graveyard as well, and the Meat Hook Massacre will wipe the board, potentially gain some life and drain the opponent to death as some of our creatures die. Then the next category are ramp cards, where Dark Ritual is especially powerful with a Planeswalker as our commander. We've got some 2-mana ramp artifacts including Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone, the usual suspects. The Celestis at 3-mana can potentially help loot away some discard effects in the late game if the opponent's already empty-handed, so we can find more useful cards. And Key to the Archive, also a staple in any historic brawl deck, can draft a card from the powerful 15-card spellbook, discarding a card from our hand which we're often able to do. And then finally we have a category of card draw effects and planeswalkers, where Valky can also be played as Tybalt at 7 mana, Frex and Arena can draw an extra card each turn, Fable of the Mirror Breaker can both ramp us and potentially give us some card selection, the Reflection of Kikijiki also very powerful with all these creatures that have a powerful Enter the Battlefield ability making the opponent discard, we've got Seasoned Pyromancer can also potentially loot away some cards and eventually can use the 5 mana ability from our graveyard to make some 1 1 tokens, we've got Gonti, Lord of Luxury, 2 3 Death Touch, finding a card from the opponent's top 4. Got Soren the Mirthless drawing extra cards with the plus one, making two three a life linking flying vampires with the minus two. And then a Chandra can also make extra mana, helping us ramp, can potentially take out a creature right away and provide card advantage with the plus one. And then we've got two six mana Liliana Planeswalkers with a Dreadhorde General making zombies drawing cards when our creatures die, also quite good with all those cheap creatures we play early on. And then Professor Onyx can drain the opponent with Magecraft, can also make them sacrifice a creature which also plays well with Turgrid, and then can provide card advantage with the plus one. And then the mana base, one card I want to highlight in particular is Frexen Tower, as a way to potentially sacrifice a creature to add an extra mana, which also plays very nicely with Angrath's minus 3 ability, even if we steal a more expensive creature from the opponent, we can still sacrifice it to our Frexian Tower. And then a few creature lands including Hive of the Eye Tyrant and Den of the Bugbear, and some card draw with Castle Lochthwain, and then plenty of dual lands and some snow lands to go with our Blood on the Snow at 6 mana of course. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Catilda, green-white humans. Well, I have to mention Extinction Event will be quite effective, got a few removal spells. A little light on lands, admittedly. Don't think Duress is going to be at its best here, but I'll give it a shot. And then... Yeah, I could Duress turn one, I could wait a turn. Not too many one mana spells I'm worried about. Okay. So I can duress and then potentially bolt Katilda, or we can keep up Stomp from Bone Crusher. So I have a turn three play of just playing the creature as well. That seems better. And I'm assuming they'll play a creature we can kill here. Alright, it's going to be a beggar instead. That one we cannot stomp. So do I just stomp face, play Bone Crusher? Yeah, that seems fine. Now our plan might be to Extinction Event on Even instead of trying to bolt Katilda. So there's Katilda, could see another 2-drop. And yep, it's going to be a Dawnbringer Cleric. Alright, perfect. Found the land for Extinction Event on Even. Nice, 3 for 1. Seemed a bit risky to let them untap with all that mana, in case they resolve something we wouldn't be able to deal with. And now with an untapped land we can play Angrath on a board where he's not under any pressure.
Okay, militia captain could eventually be scary, but for now, not really a concern. So, yeah, let's get a Fell Spectre down. That way Angrath does double damage with his plus one next turn. And then we've been patient on the rest, so we might be able to play it soon. And especially for opponents stuck on lands now, the discard's going to be extra punishing. Vanguard a 3-3 with Ward 2. Could trade for Bone Crusher. So we have a couple options. But Angrath plus and then play defense sounds appealing. Opponent loses 4 life. And I'll keep both creatures back to protect our Planeswalker. And then next turn we'll finally run out Duress. Lockdown, pretty good here. Pumping all humans. Can still trade Bone Crusher for Vanguard and then Bolt takes care of Militia Captain. So no need to chum block with Fell Spectre. Ooh, the Pact-Bound Servant's a fun one too. So how about we play that? I'll discard my Mindstone, which they can potentially play. Not a card we get to see in action very often. Okay, so a bunch of triggers. We get a Broodmoth, and then I want to Duress before plussing Angrath, and then we can take our Mindstone back. And then plus. No fire, no steel. And I guess if our opponents at 3 life we can just win by bolting their face. Although bolting Captain would have worked out too. Well, this game played out quite nicely, and Pankbound Servant just adding salt to the wound. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Davriel, a rogue, shadow mage, so discard mirror match. So important is going to be to hit our land drops, and potentially get some cards like Frex and Arena in play to draw extra cards. To offset all the cards we'll have to discard from our hand. So yeah, I like this start, if we can hit our land drops and get a turn 3 arena down. Finding some ramp artifacts would also be beneficial. Waste Knot is incredibly scary, and we don't have a lot of ways to remove it. Underworld Dreams can go. And if Davriel comes down, what do we discard? It's gonna be a Dreadfugue instead. Getting Rampage, drawing a card. Alright, I guess our opponent's missing a third land drop, that helps. So now we can get Frex and Arena down. And then we're on our way to get our own Planeswalker in play as well. Ooh, Turgrid could be exciting. And uh, yeah, Key to the Archive, also quite powerful, although we have to be a little careful here with our own Liliana and Waste Knot, as well as Key to the Archive. Uh, if we discard a card, our opponent still triggers Waste Knot. So I might want to just go Liliana kill Visitor and take it from there and then maybe next turn play Turgrid and then it might be worth it to plus Liliana. Alright, Davriel comes down. Yeah, 
yeah, I think Keita's Archive can go now. And then we'll have to decide between Glorybringer or Turgrids, which are both pretty decent here. Glorybringer killing Davriel is probably the safer play. And then I think I decline to plus Liliana. Wait until we get at least Turgrid down. Invasion, that's fine. And removal on Glorybringer. That's acceptable. Ooh, Professor Onyx. So, yeah, could get another Planeswalker down. But, yeah, not hating Turgrid and then plus Liliana. Hope they have some permanence in hand so that we can make them discard. And then I could discard a land myself, which, you know, makes two mana with Waste Knot, which they probably won't be able to use. Unless they've got an instance. Or I can get rid of, let's say, Colagon's Command and make them draw. Uh, kind of like the idea of discarding lands and giving them less value. And then if we don't get to play Onyx next turn, I can still go for Angrath. Really Alright, opponent actually had a 2-mana instant, so that did not work out. We also didn't get any value from Turgrid. So, that could have gone better. Opponent's got their own Liliana. The best thing about zombies is their adoring obedience. So your opponent's going to discard. What do I get rid of? Burglar Rant turns into a zombie for them. That might be okay. At some point Angrath can minus to steal a large zombie. And there's Colgan's command we can use as well. If I, let's say, discard Professor Onyx... Then next turn I can go Burgle Rats plus Colagon's Commands. Liliana is going to be at 5 loyalty. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's fine to get rid of the rats. No Alright, so won't quite be able to play Professor Onyx. The Packbound Servant is interesting. Opponent is down to one card. Is it worth it? There's still a Waste Knot to worry about. Next turn, our opponent could potentially play Davriel, make us discard two cards. Which is also an extra reason to go for Angrath. And to potentially not activate Liliana. So we'll pass, and then if they make me discard twice, I can still hang on to Professor Onyx. Alright, Thoughtseize can make that a bit more complicated. And then... Could use Colgan's command to get back a creature as well, but that's going to be tricky to set up. Yeah, won't have the mana to necessarily play that creature. Probably still hang on to Colgan's command. Sorry for your loss. And then we can let Liliana go. Fetch a mountain. I guess her opponent does have a castle they can use to draw. But now we do as well. And here I can minus on the zombie. And 
and then I'll probably use Call Against Command to make the opponent discard and kill their zombie token as well. Because if I get back a creature, how does that work out? I can also activate Castle. So I can potentially discard two cards and keep the creature. So I guess in the face of Liliana and Davriel that still works. So I have to decide if I want to make them discard, kill the zombie, or if I get back a creature and probably kill the zombie. I think we get back a creature. So I think we want to kill it now. And we'll go with probably Glorybringer to tag down Liliana. Then I can discard lands to Liliana Plossing. And if they go for Davriel, I'll use the castle in response. They will take care of Angrath. Opponent adds some mana. I really don't care about they could use their Field of Ruin on our castle. And that's another answer to a Planeswalker. Alright, so this has been the Battle of the Enchantments, in a way. The one permanent type that's difficult to interact with. Opponent passing with a bunch of mana up is a little interesting but now we can undercity plunder to check for removal and then still go for glory bringer all right they had a hagra mauling that makes sense and we conjured a cabal stronghold which could actually come in handy so for now play glory bringer no need to exert. Kill their planeswalker. I'm a survivor. Angrath lines up quite nicely against all these tokens. I do hope this mask is intimidating and let me pick your brain for a minute. Ugh, what a Thoughtseize doesn't do much. Ooh, a Blood on the Snow. Can even get back a Planeswalker here. Like Professor Onyx, since we have six snow lands. Yeah, that seems good. So we'll destroy all Planeswalkers. This wasn't part of get back our Onyx. And then we can keep plussing to provide more card advantage, and yeah. We managed to outgrind our opponents, mostly thanks to an early Frex Arena. Sequencing did not necessarily work out in the best way with that uh, removal spell on Turgrid, so possible that going for Professor Onyx early would have worked out a little bit better, but I guess it made the game more interesting. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Harashmi, Eternity's Crafter. This hand feels a little bit slow without early creatures to sack to Frexen Tower. We won't be able to ramp into our Planeswalkers. This is a little bit better. More early removal to deal with Rashmi, potential ramp artifacts. And then we've got Angrath at 5 mana.
Serpo and displaying quite a few instants to synergize with Rashmi's ability. That makes sense. No early plays so far. So unless they play a creature we can heartless act next turn or mana's gonna go unused, but next turn Rankle could also be quite effective alongside Burglar Rat. That's something we can sacrifice. They're unlikely to play Rashmi and be tapped out, so they probably want to get some value from her first. They might also be playing some counter spells. So, a few ways to approach this. I think I'm okay going Rankle if they counter it, so be it. Then next turn maybe slam down Angrath. And then... See how they react. Alright, Disdainful Stroke. Fine to get that out of the way. So the early Burglar Rats are gonna get in some good damage. If our opponent wants to keep up counter spells all game long. So I'll hit for one, and then, yeah, we'll probably get Angrath countered as well. We're well on our way to casting Valky as Tybalt. Rewinds, lets them untap their lanes. So if they have a big card draw spell to follow up, that would be painful. There's a Brainstorm for starters. So next turn... Could see Rashmi, but they might also just keep playing a draw-go game where they keep up a wall of counter spells. It's gonna be the Nyad to make their spells cheaper. Davrail's not bad. So I think I hang on to Heartless Act as an answer to Rashmi, and then for now, Rampage. Sacrifice Nayat and then play Davriel. Right, that works. So Davriel could be a nice three for one if they can't pressure him. And then next turn, with a land, we could either play Tybalt or replay Angrath. Alright, time for Rashmi. And unlikely that they have a way to protect her for just one mana. Did not draw the seventh land, so... Let's start by making them discard. And then, let's see, if I go Heartless Act, I can still activate Castle. If I play Mindstone, I wouldn't be able to. But I think getting Mindstone in play, so we have 7 mana for next turn, is still worth it. That worked. And we can attack for 1. Opponent is going to pass. Alright, I would rather get Angrath countered than uh, Tybalt. Probably fine to play out my land still. You're just fuel for, for 5 mana, should I leave Burglar Red back in case of a flash creature? Maybe worth it. 1 damage is probably not that relevant. And then I can make them discard with Davriel, or I can keep it around for additional damage. I think I'd rather get the extra card out of their hands. And yeah, opponent has given up too many discard effects to keep up. And there we go, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Corvolt, so Jun's Sacrifice deck. And yeah, we've got a reasonable start with some early ramp artifacts. Could use some removal, which we're currently lacking. But uh, Fell Spectre should be quite good.
Cold Steel Heart probably names black. And then still hoping to draw land. Bard class, okay, so they've got lots of legendaries. Ooh, a relic a robber. Okay. Might want to take it out with Colgon's commands. So, could go Mindstone, play Colgon's commands. And then the question is do I want to make them discard or do I want to destroy this goblin construct? I don't think the construct is all that problematic. So I'd rather make him discard. So two damage, discard. Gets rid of a blood on the snow. Bar class levels up. So won't quite be able to fell specter plus beetle to clean them out. I can go fable plus beetle to get that established. Yeah, that seems fine. So we'll start here. And then we've got a nice answer to Corvold if that shows up. I guess Corvold does get a discount from Bard class, so that's pretty cute. They still need black mana, which the tower doesn't produce without a creature to sacrifice. So our opponent's going to level up again. And now I can discard Swamp. Our own blood on the snow. So we can either get Angrath down or Fell Spectre. Probably fine to get our Planeswalker. And then, once they do eventually get Corvold down, we've got plenty of answers. But not having to discard some good cards like Elder Gergroth. So yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Vadric, blue-red spells. My hand is... Okay, Fatal Push needs a bit of work to be enabled. But um, I guess it works with my Saga transforming. And then having removal like Rampage to potentially answer Vadric could be important. And Fable potentially sets up turn 4 Angrath. Turn 1 Biomancer. Alright, I guess that's worth pushing. Turn two plunder, a nice two for one. But it's gonna negate that. Still feels like a win in my book when we have all these powerful non-creature spells in hand. Will we see Vadric or does our opponent wait? Alright. So now we face an interesting decision. Do I wanna kill Vadric or play Fable. Feels like a mistake to let them untap with it. So I can either March for two or Rampage. I guess March being an instant is a bit more flexible, so I'll just go for the Sorcery Speed Rampage. Even though it can deal with artifacts and Planeswalkers, don't expect a blue-red spells deck to have many Planeswalkers. They might have a couple artifacts here and there, but Given that uh, Vadric provides a discount, they don't need as many ramp artifacts. It is night. And yeah, key to the archive seems fine now.
resolves. And don't think I'm interested in any of these. And now Angrath could potentially answer Vadric if they tap out. Right, opponent keeps up some interaction potentially. I guess we can test out the waters with Fable. And hope there's no big card draw effect. Follow could awakening to refresh their hands, that's fine. We've got instant speed answers to Vandrick. Smoldering Egg, I guess we'll stick around for a little bit. And can discard Mountain. Probably fine to tank for two. See if they block and then a Braid could finish off Smoldering Egg. Opponent just took it, so it could go for Angrath and Minus on the Egg, but it's unlikely for them to transform it next turn. So could go for Angrath now and then just start plussing, although I expect this to get countered. Does not. Never seen water, no fire, no steel. And then I'll run out the Expanse. Ooh, discovered a formula, so the opponent's hand must be stacked if they discarded that one. Maybe a time warp to take an extra turn. Right, time for Vandrick, which we can abrade. So, gonna go for it now, I think. They have protection with Lazata plating, that's fine. But then next turn we could minus Angrath to deal with Vadric or Egg, still have a march in hand. So felt like we were in a pretty good spot. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Kethys, the Hidden Hands, so a legendary deck, which yeah is inherently, I think, advantaged against the discard strategy just because of Kethys' ability to replay cards from the graveyard. But we have a promising start with lots of early discard effects. Lightning Bolt, I guess, a little short of killing the 3-4. But Angrath could use the minus to deal with it. So I'm gonna try it. And yeah, we'll take an Arcane Signet. Lightning Bolt can deal with Kambal. And now they're missing white mana. And then we might have to take Bolas the Citadel with Thoughtseize, or we can hope to get there with one of our author discard effects. Yeah, going for Undercity Plunder is probably okay here. Not too worried about Azusa given that our opponent's not really a dedicated ramp deck. Opponent's gonna get rid of her. And forest still a fine pickup here. Okay, so next up I can Thought Seize Keep a Bolts. And see a Firemind Vessel, which might be worth taking. And then the hope is that we can Make them discards. Bolas the Citadel with Angrath. Mindstone I can keep as it maybe speeds up Professor Onyx by turn.
And the opponent did not find white mana, so they couldn't really cast anything this turn. And we're on our way to ramp into Angrath and Onyx. So yeah, showing the importance of those early discard spells, sniping the ramp artifacts for fixing. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Elish Norn, a white ramp deck, presumably, with lots of removal and sweepers. And this hand has potential, with a Dark Ritual running out Angrath early, it could be quite effective. Can also expect some enchantment-based removal spells to deal with our Planeswalker. But I'm hoping we can get some value from him first. And then Mauling, probably gonna play Tapped. The virus Beetle on two, and then turn three, we can play Angrath. Clarion Spirits might be worth stomping. So Clarion Spirit does point more towards a token deck to leverage the plus two plus two as opposed to a big ramp deck. So also have the option of just Angrath and then minus on Clarion Spirit. That might be the best solution here. So we dealt with Clarion Spirit and developed Angrath. Monuments can help them go wide. So that is a scary card. Do have a few ways to deal with artifacts in our deck we could draw. And then for now, I'll probably just make them discard too. And then Bone Crusher can hopefully block whatever creature they play next. Have a Crux of Fate, so yeah, we're kind of all in on this Angrath. And now we've got Fell Spectre to go with it. Opponent did not play anything, they discarded Aspirant. So, yeah, not sure what they were holding. Maybe something they could have played at instant speed here, otherwise it made more sense for them to keep the creature that goes with Monument, but uh, turn 3 Angrath is difficult to overcome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Croxa, so potentially another discard deck. This hand's not really well suited for the matchup, no card draw engines, just a bunch of removal which doesn't line up against Croxa and discard effects. So I'll take my free Mulligan, this is much much better. And could see what they're working with thanks to Inquisition. I think I keep it until after we play Waste Knot. And then just play a tapped land for now. And then Ecstatic to resolve Waste Knot. Could also go Signet, Inquisition, next turn play Key, ramp into Angrath. I think I still prefer getting the enchantment down. Make sure it doesn't get messed with. Alright, Falky does not see any creatures. Disciples also quite nice. So sequencing here. My lands come into play tapped at the moment. I guess we could lead with Disciple if they discard land, I can still go Signet Inquisition. And if not, it still trades for Valky. Alright, we get a creature instead. If they play Croxa, what do I discard? Might have been key to the Archive, since Signet is enough to ramp into Angrath. But uh, now I can go Ridge, play Key. And what did we find? Demonic Tutor? Sounds exciting. Get rid of. I could see the argument for Inquisition at this point, since the opponent might have expensive cards left in hand. Or we could get rid of Crossroads if they destroy Key. I might regret it. Or just get rid of Signets. 
since a land might be better than a ramp artifact. And uh, sure, we'll offer the trade, but it's probably going to accept. Spider Queen, okay. Not bad. Although Angrath stealing a spider lets us attack down Spider Queen with a menace creature. So that seems pretty decent. Could also Inquisition in the hopes of discarding a creature. I guess the Devil's still good. Get to draw a card. And yeah, we'll stick to the plan. I will lose Angrath to the Spider, but since we have a mana advantage, that might be okay. Uh, is there an alternative here? No, this seems fine. Your crew for my and then I could send the Elder Fang Disciple at the opponent's face. Since it doesn't block the spider anyway. And the rest doesn't seem needed. So, opponent still hasn't played their commander. They might be waiting to play and escape in the same turn. But we'll see. Demonic Tutor opens up a ton of possibilities. Feed the Swarm can go. Angrath is still an answer to Croxa after all. And Burglar Rat seems nice with Waste Knot in play. Okay. So if I Burglar Rat, it's basically free since we know they're discarding a land. And then I could go for Angrath and just plus to deal two damage. It feels like a bit of a waste, so maybe I'm better off going Demonic Tutor. And then five mana. I guess Turgrit would have been nice to maybe get. Certainly have a lot of possibilities. Yeah, Turgrid makes sense. Could go for a Planeswalker. Maybe get like Chandra. Establish an extra Planeswalker that can generate mana. And card advantage. Yeah, seems good enough. And then keep Angrath as an answer to Croxa potentially. Stop, drop, and roll. Won't help you, buddy. Could have also opted to activate Hive to exile Croxa, although would go back to the command zone afterwards. So I'm fine if they escape here. Okay, so I guess we can start by plussing four cards. Yep, you're going down. Ever seen water burn? And that's going to be 11 damage coming their way. And Crocs are getting sacrificed as it's a two mana card. They're not close to escaping a second time. We're empty handed, so opponent playing Croxa doesn't accomplish much.
best case scenario, our opponent has a card stuck in hand that we can make them discard with Angrath to enable Waste Knot as well. I think we can even kick an Inscription here if we wanted to. Alright, Thane Death on the Necrogoyf. So this is mana value, three or less destroy. This is five, madness is three. So I guess we'll plus here first. Oh, my lucky day. And then if we activate hive, that's three. Getting close to lethal. That seems worth it. Shrinks the Necrogoyf, and then Inscription doesn't have anything to get back. Suppose I could have tried to attack with the 1 1s as well after shrinking the Necrogoyf, but could see wanting to protect my Planeswalkers instead. No way to use that mana. Pyre can go after Chandra. And Crocside gets rid of Inscription. But now our opponent seems dead to our creature lands. And uh, opponent discards their own Angrath. It's pretty funny. Alright, can plus. And then a Hive attack should be enough. And can get rid of Croxa as well. Good game. Alright, so we got to better off several discard decks in today's games here. So Angrath seems like a pretty good choice if you like discard decks as far as commanders go. As Planeswalkers are not the easiest to interact with can often come down, maybe kill a creature with a minus, and then start plussing, providing extra damage and discard effects. And there's no lack of synergy with discard effects in our deck. So while there are many ways to build them in Historic Brawl, I'm pretty pleased with how this one turned out. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.